you are live right now. I'm live on many pages. Well, I'm, I'm telling yeah, you, 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 Zach, when, Zach, just a minute, Zach. Are you alive just, right Zach, now? just Zach. Let's make that very clear. Yeah. Let's make, let's not mislead our why, people. Why didn't you, why didn't this page correct the information that it was not UPMD thugs? In, instead, it was the family of the deceased. No, we didn't have the facts, first of all. And first of all, we didn't no, communicate but it, that. But, but, first but of after all, having the facts... This should have been uh, corrected or brought down. No, I, th I think it was corrected. We it saw on ZMB. This is still here? Oh, uh, on, on, on the you, page? You may have to tell the administrators of those pages. But what I can tell you is our material are posted and cross-posted. But, but, but Right but now, I'm be... on 5FM yes. Live. Just a minute. Yeah. 5FM Facebook. I'm live on that page. I'm not an administrator of that page. I don't control but that But you page. are in charge of publicity. And the, and, and the fact that Patriotic Front is attached to all this these lies you have the right to correct this because we at the end of the day, we issued the formal statement of, you as chairman of publicity your name is is dented i mean because now you're being called propagandist oh no 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 it's uh, you know what it's, I mean? it's, it's welcome and, it's and, welcome and, and all these are adding up no no no, no. It's, why it's, then it's, do we have your page reporting that it reported that the UPND cadres ransacked the funeral house no my and page now you have the right facts, my page you can't just a minute. That post. Yeah, just a minute. It remains my, misinformation as, yeah, as we speak. Yeah, my page has never reported that fact. My page never rendered video. Either Emmanuel Mwamba page or my profile never rendered story. And because, first of all, I was familiar with the facts around the, the, the attacks on uh, the Kambulis. I haven't I, I had an inkling that they are complaints. I am not aware of who finally attacked the tents, brought down the tents, and ransacked the food. I, it may not be the family. It may not be the family. We but still don't facts, have. What facts do you have as of today? As of today, the family was complaining and was demanding that the casket must be taken so to the farmhouse. So this was the family? Which, yes, which it was the family. No, I don't know. I can't say that. Zach, I'll be speculating. So it was wrong I to did. name the UPND cutters as well? Because of course, if they were not the ones. I did it. We did it. Zach, let, me, let us make it very clear. Yeah. Our press statement is still in public domain. You can read it. It focused on the attack of President uh, Edgar Lungu's convoy, where we had sufficient facts and evidence. That's the only one where we issued a formal statement. All the speculations around the barrier yeah. side, I'm, I'm around... Made to believe, I'm made to believe most of these patriotic front pages authentic one is where you are live right now, which also a day ago carried this same story that we are referring to. Uh, they the, are under your department no, or no, your, 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 the, your committee the, 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 the patriotic in the front, party. The patriotic front doesn't have an official page. Okay? By virtue that people might carry my live coverage, they carry it for purposes of news. You understand how social media works. Uh, people post and cross post material. I gave you an example that I'm currently live on, um, on uh, 5FM. I don't control 5FM. I'm probably live on Grindstone. I don't control Grindstone. This is wherever the news is, there's live coverage, there is interest. The news sites themselves who pick this material and will be live. For us, our facts remain the same. We regret that an old video on the attack of President Daka in the HLMA was when he was in opposition where he was attacked in Serenje, was attached to our story two hours later. It was two hours later. Our story of the attack on Edgar Lungo was standing for two hours before the videos are attached to our story to show that Edgar Lungo's uh, 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 video on his attack was the one. As soon as I became aware of that video, first of all, I saw the vehicles. None of those vehicles are in Edgar Lungu's convoy. And because I follow politics in this country so much, I remember that this is a Serenje video where President Akainde Ichilema's entourage, I think they were coming from a filling station, I don't know where they were coming from, Pika or wherever they were coming from, were attacked by suspected PF cadres in 2021. And I quickly wrote on all blogs where I am, guys, this video, this is, don't attach it to our story. It's not the video for President Edgar Lungu. We don't have a video where President Edgar Lungu is being attacked yet because our media was at the cemetery and the church and they didn't follow him when he went to the lodge. But maybe those that were by, by standing by 
might have taken a video and it may emerge, but drop that video. Of course, the opposition, I mean, the ruling party and the UPND have taken interest in that matter to say we propagated lies that we showed an old video. No. The story we issued was about the attack on Edgar Lungu. And the story had been distributed for two hours, if you notice the timelines. The video emerges two hours later. Maybe we were set up. Maybe someone from the ruling party says, ah, with the excitement of Mwambachen Tubatumine, we'll see. And maybe we fell in the trap. And now my story, our story, that Edgar Lungu has been attacked, was now being circulated together with the uh, old video, thereby undermining the attack that Edgar Lungu was attacked. Remember, it's very embarrassing for the state that you should have a former president being stoned in the presence of the police. It's a very bad story for them. So their media have shifted attention to the old video to attempt to make us that we are telling lies. Edgar Lungu was not even attacked because the video is old. You see the thin narrative is to undermine the report that Edgar Lungu has done to the police. We have reported to Chingola police station. We have identified six of the nine attackers. We have identified the three vehicles we were moving in. And we've given the police and the docket has formally been opened. What we expect is for the Minister of Home Affairs to immediately say they will investigate the matter, to immediately investigate the police that were present at the time, to immediately establish why they allowed those youths who we have identified and we have named and we have named their vehicles and now for a Toyota Corolla and the Mark X that were on the scene. And of the nine suspects, we've named six. We hope that the police can move in. But they would like to peddle the lie that our report to the police, the attack on Edgar Lungu is not true because the story was accompanied by old video footage. No, I think let us separate the two. There was an attack on the former president. There was an attack and an accepted dastard act, criminal act, done against the former president. And that matter must be pursued. This is the Tuesday edition of the burning issue here on the Happy World of Five FM Radio. We are also live on uh, other platforms and we're live on uh, Tuta FM Radio and that is uh, based in Mansa on 90.7 FM covering the rest of Rokula province. We are also live uh, in Central Province covering to be precise on Spice FM. That is on 91.1 here in Osaka, 89.9, and the surrounding areas as well. Remember, we are also live on our Facebook page. That's 5FM Radio Zambia. I will be uh, taking phone calls for you to have an interaction with our guest this morning. Our guest is Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, who is the patriotic front chairperson for information and publicity. And uh, we'll take your phone or your phone calls on 0955-221515. Uh, let's take this one. Good morning and welcome to the burning issue. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm fine and I'm, off, I'm okay. Uh, please tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Mutwe Wang Sofu. Okay, so uh, Msonda, please go ahead. M
Tuata Shabam Sond. Tuata Shabam Sond. M. Kwai. Right. Uh, 0955 is the number you're calling us on. Uh, we've got uh, another caller. Uh, this one is uh, uh, Madame Mobipiri on the line. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning, Jack. How are you today? Honorable MCC Mumbipiri, Mwashbuken Mayo. And Dita.
Natasha, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mumbi, for, uh, for calling through. Uh, let's see if we can take uh, uh, some more calls. I'll take some more and then you can respond. Good morning. Hello, good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the Benning Issues. Where are you calling us from? Thank you, Mr. Chikubabi. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming through. Uh, 0955, I'll take one more and then I can give you an opportunity to respond. 0955 221515. Uh, good morning and welcome to the Benning issue. Your name and where are you calling us from? Your name again? Hello? Hello? Can, you, can we get your name? Can we get your name first? We didn't get your name, though. Well, um, we didn't get his name, but uh, we'll take that uh, if you are okay with responding to it. Thank you very much uh, for calling. Um, maybe I give you an opportunity to respond. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, our brother Msonda from Kabwe says, why is government, you know, just focused on the former president and the patriotic front instead of attending to hunger, unemployment, poverty, load shedding, why aren't they focused on bigger issues, but they're focused um, on uh, President Lungu? I think that's self-explanatory. This is a jittery government. It has no faith in itself. It has failed. And they think that by diverting attention to attacking Emmanuel Mwamba or Edgar Lungu or Mumbipiri, the Zambians will not debate the hunger they have or the lack of uh, electricity they do not have. You know. Um, my dear sister, Mumbipiri, usually wherever she calls, she condemns this business of transporting suspects to other jurisdictions. And she quotes the Nelson Mandela rule. And people don't understand why she's so passionate about it. I was also just talking about the matter of Elizabeth Mayomayo from Chingola. She's in her bedroom. She issues a voice note to a, a Chingola page. Why bring her to Lusaka? Why charge her in Lusaka? The Mandela rule is, um, is a rule that comes from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes. And 
to protect prisoners and detainees. It has issued standard, minimum standards, minimum rules and minimum standards and treatment that both prisoners and detainees should face. And one of the key ones is, is the one that Honorable Mumpiri always quotes everywhere, the, 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 the Article 57, which talks about that you cannot transport uh, suspects away from their family structure, away from where they are. If possible, prosecute them in an area of the jurisdiction where the alleged crime or committed. Even in this country, remember both government lost the cases for uh, Chilufia Tayari in Lukulu and for, uh, for Rafael Nakachinda in Solwezi. We simply made an application, even our laws do not allow. If you're a resident in Lusaka, you committed your alleged crime in Lusaka, you can be taken to uh, Solwezi. The way the UPND have been doing, what they do is they will send a complaint. Like why me currently is being prosecuted in Kalomo because the UPND raised a complaint in Kalomo and why me was taken there. And uh, there's another young man that was jailed for, for, for some months again taken to Kaoma. All those processes are illegal. This government is just setting themselves up for more payments that will be done to these accused persons. Because both the international law and our local law do not allow what the UPND is doing of transporting suspects to these areas. The last call was uh, from um, uh, Mr. Chukubawe. Um, no, second last. Mr. Chukubawe, I think, was cataloging his complaint. But let me go to the last one. That says, why don't we give President Lungu security? I stand that the former president is entitled to state security. You've seen Donald Trump is campaigning. He has the biggest state security ever, even beating that of the sitting president, especially after elevating the level of threats and risks around him. That's how it's supposed to be. This is a former president. He's campaigning against the current president, but the state have proceeded to provide him with bulletproof uh, stages, you know, cubicles, and they've attached a number of highly specialized personnel to protect him. You may remove his benefits, but leave the state security there. I agree with my dear brother, Honorable Mao Sampa, has been very insistent on this matter. And there have been other voices that you could be engaged, doesn't matter what the law provides. This is the only surviving former president we have. We may not, uh, uh, we may not agree that he has come back into politics and is currently the PF president, but you can't take the, that away that he's Zambia's sixth president and is our only surviving former president. So why are you denying him state security? Why are you allowing UPND cadres to attack him in the manner they did in the presence of the police? So I agree with you there. So uh, let's take some more calls in this case uh, on 0955 Call us back. Uh, we lost that particular one. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, your name and where are you calling us from? Out to Ashbukashan by name.
Kuliva the Rolex now on the Poma Posti, then the company has found the OPD, me a joint track to send the Kukuta Kukuri in America in 1926. Me when I see the ETS, I just see that this is a fellow political party, the body of the Nigerian is there. And if I'm on the Benito, please tell the nation, Kalumpa to one is in the Zamari form, Zamari form is the population there, that you will not worry about the Miran to Chapu Commission is not in the Zamari form, the Zamari form is the Miran. Thank you very much uh, uh, for coming through. Uh, we'll take some more on 0955 Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Kembe, Roman Sanjay, please go ahead. Now, uh, Honorable Monsanje Mribuanji. Pero mtu uza kutimu kapanga mulandu e, Wapangi wa kutundu mweze mulandu kwa mene waenda kuka Kwa kwele kwa kwele kwele kuno kusaka Na mga wamena azapa sabatu wamene ndara mazaku tiwa kwele wewe wajia Ni mili isi wajia wamena ala kwele mtu mwende kuja Zino kare mwende sebe, zinkwele, kwele zafa mwende ya paipe kutu Kwa hali kwa siri ya ziwa mwamba we Mtu wapanga mulandu kutukwina angu weni いいわめのわかんだもんなんでどうこうなおかしいのうちのこれさえんだおかしいだ大丈夫なのかねあまりのおかしいこんなにおりよ知れたんだおかしいじゃあでもまあいいわらおかしいですねおかんぶいわんで
if I did that wrong to you, Brother Romero, I need to come to you quickly and say, pray for you, and we will walk in one way. Not what is happening. Today, the people, the Europeans, when they come out, things will be another way again. So, if they spread, they spread, we need to call it a state, they spread. But otherwise, I can say this is what I might to share. Thank people. you. Thank you very much for, for coming through, Brian. Uh, Mr. Momba, you can react uh, to uh, the concerns. Yeah, uh, I agree with um, the first caller that talked about load shedding and uh, how it has affected our country and how people that have loans, their businesses, they are literally collapsing. And he says the UPND promise that there'll be peace, that there'll be development, that there'll be no load shedding. Um, but, and he was wondering how GBM, who helped take the UPND to areas where UPND was not strong, Chimbakambuili, who helped take UPND where they were not, are the ones that are now suffering on this. And he says he's going to court, can be placed on the UPND government. And he's right. Chimbakambuili was jailed for five months over hate speech in Kasama, alleged hate speech. He appealed against that case, but what is surprising is the appeal by the DPP who are demanding a longer sentence against Chimbakambuili. When the tragic and fatal accident occurred, Chimbakambuili was going to high court. The high court had already heard the appeal within a period of one week and was going for judgment. And his brothers went therefore to support him because it wasn't a normal hearing. He was going for judgment. And um, I have seen, even while I was at the funeral, a lot of people put the blame on government that they are palpable, they are complicit in this death because they are trying people in places where they shouldn't be trying and they are very vengeful in the manner they are applying the law. Like in this case, the DPP applied for a longer sentence than the one that was given by the magistrate court of five months. Our appeal has, has been very consistent. Follow the law, follow the rule of law. Don't take Nakachinda to Solwezi. Don't take Chilufia Tayali to Lukulu. Don't take Elizabeth from Chingola to Lusaka. Try them in their areas. Don't manufacture complaints of UPND cadres in Kalomo. You take people and they are jailed there without family, without party, or any friend support, and they are isolated. Uh, people may, might even forget about the young man, Waimi, that his trial has been uh, going on and uh, in Livingstone. This is someone from Muflira. He issued this video, he's a vlogger. He issued this video in Muflira. Why is he being tried in Livingstone? And like Honorable Mumbipiri clearly stated that this is against international rules, the Nelson Mandela rule and uh, the United Nations treatment of prisoners and detainees, that you have to allow the suspects to be in the jurisdiction, especially where their family is. Don't, unless you have a proper, proper reason to remove them from that jurisdiction. The last one, our dear brother was talking about uh, uh, that we have to be good to one another. He says, if the PF did you bad, don't return bad with evil. Be better and is right. And the same things that the UPND are doing to us, doing to opposition, who will likely visit them when they leave power. And he says, when will this cycle end? And I agree with him. We are celebrating a Diamond Jubilee. We are 60 years as a country. It should be an opportunity to reset the button, to start afresh, do clean politics, do politics that they unite the country, that foster national development. Do politics that are not tribal, that are not regional. Away, abandon corruption. Abandon all these petty issues that we've been preoccupied with in the last 60 years. Can't we? And this is now a button that is changing from one generation to another. The President Akainde Echirima will likely be the last president that was born before independence to rule us. Going forward, we we'll likely have young people that were born after independence to be our presidents. Why can't we do our politics totally different? And this is a call for this young man. And for me, this is momentous 
especially that we're in Independence Week. We are two days away from commemorating our 60th anniversary, our Damon Jubilee. We've expressed disappointment that this government didn't do a series of events to demonstrate how uh, important this event is. But we understand they have no money. The funding is little. They, they, they are barely breathing. Salaries are coming late. If it were not the intervention that they've received from drought, uh, maybe the economy, we don't know where it would be. Um, so they put importance to unnecessary things. Edgar Lungu is appearing in the Supreme Court in the on the Supreme Court grounds there in the Constitutional Court, they will bring 1,000 police officers, numerous vehicles to transport that, very heavily armed uh, personnel to encircle the entire place. It becomes a no-go area. Why so much money? Why allow the police to, to spend money they do not have? When we're in uh, Chingola, again, you see a huge deployment of the police Totally unnecessary. Here, a former president is being attacked, and they're standing hands akimbo, ignoring the attack and the risks that have been put under the president. Uh, so we ought to do things differently. We need to demonstrate that we've learned from our past, that we have to abandon our past mistakes and forge ahead. You cannot be, have a country perpetually begging whose economy is in foreign hands whose wealth is in foreign hands. And we are beggars and bystanders to our own, own economy, to our own livelihoods, and we remain poor. Not because we are poor as a country, but we are one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Yet we remain poor because of policy and petty politics, engaged in arrests after arrests, engaged in brutalizing the opposition, reducing the democratic space, abusing parliament, abusing the judiciary, we need to reflect and start afresh. Well, uh, 0955, I'll take the last batch of calls uh, on 0955 I'll take the last four calls. But uh, uh, before we do that, I would like your reaction on the fact that um, uh, uh, Patriotic Front faction president in Miles Sampa has warned the former president, Edgar Lungu, not to masquerade as PF president. And, and this is, is, is uh, obviously a statement that we've heard before, but also it uh, brings about a lot of questions because at some point everybody else thought that the two had reconciled and obviously there is, there is a plan to save the patriotic front. Alas, it looks like uh, it's even more divided. Um, we are determined to restore the status of the Patriotic Front to its original status before State House interfered. We are determined that uh, the Patriotic Front should belong to its legitimate owners. We have always stated publicly that Mao Sampa is not PF president. It doesn't matter how many certificates they give him, the state gives him. It doesn't matter how many certificates that they give to Robert Chavinga. The two are not PF presidents, they are not part of the PF leadership. In fact, at the time they were committing these illegalities, they were both suspended. They know our PF laws, they know the PF statutes, they know the PF constitution, and they know that what was done was illegal. Just because the state is helping them, doesn't make them. Um, the party is about our people. Our people remain loyal to the leadership of President Edgar Lungu and all of us you saw in Chingola. You've seen wherever Edgar Lungu goes, the party remains very intact. The legal status might say otherwise. It's like your house, Zach. You go to Europe and you come back and you find someone is masquerading as the owner. They even have title deeds. It doesn't take away that that's your house and that you didn't sell it. What remains in between is a process to restore the original status. Where you go to court, you demonstrate that this is your property. You demonstrate that the change of titles was fraudulent and that there, there, are, there is a, a huge attempt to steal this property that belongs to you by these masqueraders. This is what has happened to the Patriotic Front. The Patriotic Front it remains the Patriotic Front. There's been an attempt by the state to destabilize the opposition, to destabilize 
uh, the Patriotic Front by taking away its legitimacy and handing out cert certificates and uh, office bearers to some other people. That fight will continue. But if you believe in democracy, you believe in the rule of law, and if you believe in the multi-party character of our country, what, what has been done to the PF is a criminal offense, and it goes to undermining our very constitution and the multi-party character of our country, and it should not be accepted. We'll keep on fighting. Yeah, let me take the last batch of calls. Uh, good morning. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Your name is Where are you calling us from? Mr. Mwanza from Cabo. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mwanza from Cabo. Yeah. Uh, Talking about the election. Uh, I think you politicians are the ones that bring confusion. You are not stressing whatever that is true. That all the politicians who are not on the election, who are the ones who are They are seeing people changing cars, from blue to black, black to red. They are seeing politicians. Thank you, Mr. Mwanza. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mwanza, for, for coming through. 0955 uh, That's the number you're calling us on. Uh, we'll take uh, another one. Good morning. Mkwa ima bombashan. Ativanishina. 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 Clovis.
Natasha Bakrovis. Uh, let me take uh, the last two on 0955 221515. That's the number you're calling us on. Our guest is Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, who is the Patriotic Front uh, Chairperson for Information and Publicity. Please call us uh, on that number if you'd like to be a part of. Uh, uh, the conversation, and again, the number you're calling us on is 0955 uh, Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? Indeed, uh, long, long time. I'm saying long time. Welcome. Those that know what has happened in this country about the family and to hear him speak in such a formal manner, we are most grateful to you for that kind of leadership. Uh, it is also my deliberate attention, I mean, intention here to thank all members of the PF why is it that kind of leadership? You know, from the time the European came to power, they came on the platform of regents, which is most unfortunate in leadership. We are actually members of political parties in the opposition who have had strange pronouncements. They cannot hold their rally. For the first time, for, for the first time in the history of this country, to hear that kind of pronouncement, that this party cannot hold their rights. Very strange things that we are seeing, that we are hearing, is most unfortunate. Because, as you said, HH is the seventh president, and he has seen all the presidents that we've talked about here. He saw them when they were in power. But he has not been able to copy certain good things from our party president. He has not been able to do that. It's someone we all see as someone who thinks knows it all. However, my contribution is that the honorable member, I think, let us actually hold on to our party, the PF, under UCA. Let us not fear these things. I, I, I think that. From statement, Latvians are now more than so a few years ago. They know what is happening in this country, and they know what is, what is going to happen in the next elections. Because it's not anything that can talk to anyone now. Everybody, you see what is happening with this political party. There are strange things happening in this political party that they were actually pushing to say. Even in the most remote parts of this country, people are questioning this party. Finally, what I want to say is, are you not surprised, Mr. Mama, uh, that for any case before our courts of law that is connected to the president or where President Hakai has been mentioned, this victory is always delivered for him. What is happening to our courts? What are these judges for? Have they all been involved? This is shameful. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, senior citizen uh, uh, Fano Mwangala. Uh, I'm taking the last call now on 0955 and uh, uh, good morning. I'm very well, brother Chisha. How are you? Great. Very well, brother Chisha. Thank you. I just want to ask a question. Since we are under the government of the king, that we have heard from the, the mouth of the, the, the president, particularly about what 
Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> Let me start with Brother Chisha and answer an earlier questions of Mingalato and uh, the Electoral Commission of Zambia. He has pointed out this is the first time that the institution is being led by a non-judge. This one has always been led by um, a judicial officer, in many cases, a Supreme Court judge. You know, from Judge Walia up to the last Justice Chulu, they all have been judges. This Mangala Zalumis is the first non sitting justice that is presiding over. West Hill, she's a non UPND cadre. Uh, and our dear brother, uh, McDonald Chpenzi, well known UPND cadre, they are in the commission. And he's saying, What are you doing about it? Aren't you worried that elections are pre rigged? We are sounding warning that. Uh, President Akainde Chilema is very determined to actually complete the process of rigging elections now. President Lungu, in his last address, talked about the lack of transparency in voter registration, NRC issuance, secret NRC issuance, and the people manning it. Then you have the Electoral Reform Technical Committee, a body that should be appointed by the president. Mwangala Zalumis has appointed one. She doesn't have powers. She wants the Electoral Reform Technical Committee to look at laws and the constitution that are required, clauses that are required for amendments. What powers does she have? What mandate does she have? She is a creature of the constitution. She can't reform herself. That's a role of Zambians, either through the president or through the Zambia Law Development Commission. They're the ones under the law. The president can invoke the Inquiries Act to attempt then to inquire into the challenges facing the electoral reform, I mean, the ele electoral um, uh, commission of Zambia. It is not up to the office orders to do that. What Mangala Zalumis is doing is illegal. She cannot reform that organization. She's a mere employee of that organization. I've never seen an employee begin, a gardener begin to pass around that I don't like the offense. I don't like the door where it is. I think I'm going to change the door. Iwe, nweani. That's what Mangala Zalumis is doing. What she's doing under the ERTC is totally illegal. And he has asked a fundamental question. Clearly, that uh, President Agai Ndechilema is determined to pre-rig the elections even before we have these elections. What are we doing about it? I would throw that question to all of us in the opposition. That what should we do to ensure that we guarantee free and fair elections to guarantee that we'll have peace and security before, during, and after elections. You have Nelly Muti, the Speaker of the National Assembly, who is also attempting to begin to reform the Constitution under what she's calling non-contentious clauses. Who is Nelly Muti to attempt to amend the Constitution? That's not our role. This is a role of the people through the executive who should either appoint a constitutional reform committee or technical committee who should then recommend through a widespread a consultative process you come up with clauses that should be amended. The manner they want to amend the constitution through ECZ and through parliament is totally illegal, it's illegitimate and it should be stopped. It should be stopped. That's a call to us the opposition. Don't come and cry in 2026. See what is happening to your register, 
to the regulations and to the law now and stop it now. Don't come and cry foul in 2026. It may be too late. Mr. Mwanza from Kawe um, said, you people, you the politicians, the very thing that was happening under the PF is also now happening under the UPND. You never learn. You are just one and the same people. Mr. Mwansaka from Kawe, I agree with you. We never learn from our past mistakes. Probably it's time, like Donald Trump says, to drain the swamp, foster a new leadership so that people can look at what Zambians want and abandon this vengeful approach to politics. What you have is Hichilema paying back. Can you imagine dismissing judges who passed a sentence against you in 2016? You dismiss them 10 years later when you have the powers. What kind of vengeance is this? What kind of actions are these? Is that in the interest of our country? Can you question the legitimate of a, I mean, the qualification of a sitting judge? Can you? Where was the appointment? What was Parliament ratifying? What happens to all the judgments they made? What ridiculous and lawless approach is this? You know, Clovis from Tendere says also that look, the country is in a crisis. Why are you concentrating on Edgar Lungu and on the Patriot Front? And he's right. He says, why don't you look at the price of millimil? Because our people can't afford it. And he's right. Um, senior citizen, Honorable Fanu Mwangala, thank you for the commendations. And he has also expressed concern that UPND and the president, Akainde Hichilema, just determined to foster vengeance and dictatorship. And um, is urged as a patriotic front to hold on to the patriotic front and to forge alliances to ensure that we are strong in 2026 to stop the re-election of President Hakainde Ichilema. I think with those um, few remarks, I think I have attended to yeah. all the concerns. Yeah. and your concluding remarks. Zach, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. We commiserate with you and the media under the circumstances you are working where you have to operate 24 hours and yet we only have power three hours. Currently, Zesco is exporting power to Botswana in the day, you can only have power in the night, and they issued a statement to that effect. They don't care about the state of our economy. Zambians will only have power in the night after they are done exporting power to Botswana and Namibia. And that's the type of government you have. So I'd like to thank you for the opportunity you gave us to express ourselves, our sincere condolences, official condolences to Honorable Shimbakambuili on the loss of his two dear brothers, Pastor Mtale Kambuili and Eoda Mwamba Kambuili. We are with you as a family and we wish you God's strength. To the people of Zambia, um, we need prayers and prayers and prayers. The season we are in is terrible. You have a government that doesn't look at your needs. It's looking at destroying the opposition, arresting the opposition. It's not concerned about your welfare, your lack of water, your lack of electricity, your lack of food. They're not concerned about that and they've demonstrated that in their budget, in their rhetoric, in their programs and in their actions. The food uh, for work program fostering. They should learn from the push program that used to happen when we had that one of the worst droughts in 2003. The push program that was fostered was across political parties. It was not a UPND issue. We have seen in townships and complaints where only the beneficiaries are not members of the community, but first they ought to declare their loyalty to the UPND. That is very sad. That little money should help to go and affect in Salata Isala. The drought didn't choose. The rain didn't say this is a PF home who put water. This is a UPND home who not put water. It was across. Everyone is affected. And we should de depoliticize those programs, remove partisan conduct, and allow our communities to benefit. Um, to members of the Patriotic Front, remember this is a difficult period for us, but we need to remain united in the manner we've remained united so far, despite the consistent and relentless attack on the leadership of President Lungu, on ourselves, the arrest, the harassment, the imprisonments, the long detentions. Let us endure. Zambia will rescue this country. And lastly, let us reset that button. Zambia is now 60 years old. We should behave as such. 
We can't conduct our politics in a vengeful manner, in the manner we are doing. We ought to foster peace, security, and national development. We ought to promote democracy and tolerance. We ought to allow the media to thrive. We ought to abandon laws such as the Cyber Security and Cyber Crimes Act, reform the Public Order Act, reform all these laws that are taking us back, and restore the economy in Zambian hands. You cannot develop if your entire economy is with foreigners. They are developing their countries. God bless you. God bless you, Zach, and God bless our country. Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much, and God bless you, too. Thank you very much to our partner radio stations, of course, to FM carrying, uh, for carrying this program live, and uh, Spice FM as well.